What's up YouTubers, it's time for another episode analyze and review and today guys we're going to be looking at episode 8 of Yu-Gi-Oh! Reigns and guys I know it's an episode not a lot of people like it so I know one of those Reigns episodes where we only see the characters, we get no dueling we get no monster battles none of that, but I'm starting to grow on these episodes really with these episodes, we get to learn a lot about the characters, get, uh, get them in depth, and we don't like get a duel, stop in the middle of it for the for like characters side talk with the side characters. I think this is way better, really. I mean, sure, we still get a little bit of um, split off to the side characters like that are not within the grains, but that's to be expected, really, especially if you're dueling in a virtual reality sort of situation. But, yeah guys, I'm going to analyse this episode, let's face it, there's a lot to take in really, and a lot about this episode I have really, really liked really. So without further ado, let's get straight into this. Let's start off with Blue Angel's condition, because we all knew straight after that duel, and even from the previews, even though some of us probably ignored the previews, the Blue Angel was in serious trouble really. After her duel, she was basically knocked out. And let's face it, when she got a direct attack while being manipulated by the Knights of Halul and completely was left unconscious. Even after I extracted the Howl card and destroyed it she was still left unconscious on the floor really and Playmaker I'm pretty sure wanted to do something to help her but she, but she couldn't why did I call Playmaker a girl? oh god but Playmaker couldn't because let's face it um, Soltek was straight after Blue Angel to try and contain the situation even Z Z Zizen was literally dead worried about his sister. He went to try and find her body, which was later found in the hospital, thanks to Yusaku finding Owl's body and taking her to hospital. Where we later find out that she, that she is in a dormitose, that's a hard word to pronounce, oh god. She's unconscious, she's laid dormant in her head. Now I say it. Dormitos, can't, can't it, Dormitos, it's a hard one, it's hard to pronounce guys, I don't know why, anyway, <laughs> just trying to keep it straight guys, we wait, because, for, but they can't figure out why that she's in a state, of course Yusaku, I and their friend knows, I still can't remember, on his name, I'm terrible with names guys, I'm not terrible, <laughs> we learn that it's in a virus sort of situation. She is conscious, but her consciousness is technically split in two. Uh, her body is still linked to link brains, which, as we all probably have figured out, she's trapped. Sort of it. She's like in limbo. She's in like a limbo sort of situation. Not limbo dancing. Limbo as in like um. She's stuck between Link Frames and the real world, really. It's sort of like that situation, really, where she's not, like, officially logged out of Link Frames and she's not, like, fully conscious in the real world. And there's nothing anyone can do until the virus is extracted from her, which, of course... The bad guys have the antibody. They have the one thing that can get rid of it. They can't be bothered to like take Blue Angel to one of the Soul Tech scientists and analyze the situation. They can't even get Owl's body from the hospital and analyze it. They can't do that. They can't take the workstation to the hospital. No, no, of course not. They choose to do the most stupidest thing possible and blame the person that did the direct attack in the game. Thinking he was the cause. He was the one who gave her the whole card. Player maker. And I feel sorry. For 
play me again. I honestly do. I feel sorry for you, Saku. Not easy getting blamed for something that's not your fault. Something that <laughs> would probably gone a lot more worse if you didn't jump in and save the day. Oh, now when I think of you, Saku, I feel, feel like I uh, think of other characters that just get the blame for no reason. So like the Hulk from Marvel, he gets blamed because he looks like a monster, really, when all he is is a hero. I think of like Kamen Rider Decade, really, who's been called the devil, and he just doesn't remember his past, and is just a rider passing by. I'm reminded of those characters now when I think of Yusaku, and I just honestly feel sorry for him. But of course, because of the Zizen, of course, accuses Playmaker, and even as, even calls upon his assistant, well, spy assistant, to go searching for Yusaku. I mean, Playmaker, really, because they don't even know that Yusaku is Playmaker, even though they've met each other in real life. <laughs> Anyway, um, but we do know this spy's dual name, Ghost Girl. I gotta admit, Ghost Girl, kind of cool, kind of cool name. But honestly, uh, not with her age. No, 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 no. Don't call yourself Ghost Girl. No, no. I would have been fine with Ghost Woman or Ghost Soetta or Ghostafine. <laughs> Ghost Girl. No, 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 no. No, I would understand if she played Link, played Dueling when she was tiny and. They say up so you can't change your name. I'll be okay with that. But not when it's like a fully developed woman. No, no, no. No. But yeah. Honestly, I love the trap they sent for Playmate. They made the entire Link Reigns the trap. They made the entire area, they made the entire cyberspace the trap, really. All Girl Scout had to do was disguise herself as Blue Angel, which is another. Uh, which is another shown of identity cyber theft. Oh god, why do they do that? Seriously. Oh my god, this is it's just making it look like a uh, cyber theft. Even cyber chameleon yourself is okay so long as you um, admit that you're doing it. Oh god, it's never. It's not a good thing, guys. Don't cyber steal. Don't don't steal someone's identity. Don't do it. Don't. Don't. Anyway, um, and literally lures in play Mega, which. Of course, Play Maker knows it's a trap, but he still goes ahead and do it, probably because he feel, probably because he feels partially responsible. I would too, really, uh, because after all, Blue Angel's unconscious, and it would have got a lot worse if Play Maker didn't jump in to save the day. But still, he's got that on his shoulders, really, that he's knocked Blue Angel unconscious. I would have done the same thing, but I still feel guilty because of it. Anyway, after Ghost Angel trapped Playmaker, Zizen steps forward, not even in a different costume. Why, Zizen? Why? You could at least make yourself look cool, hide the fact that that is what you really look like. Give yourself a suit of armor, or at least a cool new haircut. Get a haircut like mine. It's awesome. It's cool. It's bushy. It's so beast-like. Anyway, enough personal flattery. <laughs> We see him literally going up to Playmaker and literally asking to explain himself. Which Playmaker obviously does without even holding anything back. But of course, Sizen does not accept it and chooses to literally crush the living daylights of Playmaker. What on earth, dude? Anger management. Seriously. I could not even, I could not believe that. Literally, he's letting the anger get in the best of him. And not even listening to what Playmaker's even got to say. They're just, he's just dumping the gun here. He's, he's not even thinking. If he kills Playmaker, he's lost the only link to Blue Angel's safety. He's lost the link to saving his sister. He's lost pretty much everything. He's lost his world, considering that all he has left is his sister. But, does Playmaker get out of it? No. Revolver. Literally, his enemy. Both their enemies, the bad guy, the quote unquote bad guy, were told for Link Frames, comes in and literally saves Player Maker's life. Even though Player Maker has stopped his knights time and time and time again, he's jumped in, 
to save him. Does he wait until Playmaker squished like a tomato and take AI? No. I swear, there's like a hidden motive behind Revolver. If he's doing that, is it an, an enemy of my enemies, my ally sort of situation? Probably, but he literally does it so he can like battle Playmaker. I, um, but I don't know, guys. It gets more confusing the more I think about it, really. Revolver might have another hidden objective. It might be a situation where even if Playmaker loses, Revolver will still give up the antibody to save our all. It's probably done it to test Playmaker's strength to see how strong he really is. Or maybe he's doing it to get more information. It's probably that sort of situation, because honestly, Revolver does look like a man of honor. So, for all we know, it might be a Korag moment from Mystic Force or Magi Ranger, if you watch the Super Sentai version, where um, he's a good and bad guy at the same time. Wait, was Korag a good and bad guy in Magi Ranger? I haven't seen that. But you guys should know what I mean anyway, if you are a fan of Power Rangers or Magi Ranger. So, honestly guys, from all that, we actually see Zizen have a change of heart sort of situation. Seeing that the only person that can save his sister is Playmaker, and literally goes to Playmaker, and literally asks to save his sister, even though he hates him. And of course, the final line... The playmaker says, makes me fall in love with the character even more. It makes me just want to keep watching Reigns. Playmaker just turns around and go, I don't hate you. I only hate Howl. That is epic. That is literally, oh, that is literally like, superhero moment, boom. Superhero explosion. That is like, Beautiful, really. I, I'm, I just love Playmaker because of it, really. He's, he's a real hero, really. He's a peacemaker. He's me. <laughs> no, 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 no. He's literally... It may be true that he's doing it all because he hates Howl and he wants to see him dead. But honestly, he knows as what well. he, he really knows. Playmaker knows that the safety of Blue Angel is her brother... Is also on the line here because, of course, if Aoi Aoi slash Blue Angel goes, Zainzan is not going to be right in the head afterwards. He might even commit suicide because of it. Let's face it; those two have been together since their parents have passed away. He's been going to the top to protect his sister. His sister's his world. So, of course, he's going to keep going no matter what, just for her. And of course, if she goes, he goes, because he will not be able to cope. That is honestly heartwarming. And to know that Playmaker solved like doing a side mission to protect Blue Angel. It just shows like he's a real hero. He just doesn't want to admit it. But guys, next episode, we have got Playmaker versus Revolver, and that's an epic duel we've been waiting for for a very long time. We've got a Yuya versus Kite moment. We've got a Yugi versus Kaiba moment. We have got a Yusei versus Jack moment. We've got a Yuya versus Shark moment. No, wait, then Yuya versus Kai. That's a more epic. We've got a Yuya versus Reiji moment. I nearly said Declan, but I didn't want to say Declan because I don't watch the dub. <laughs> It's going to be, I have a feeling it's going to be one of those epic duels that we're all going to enjoy, really. We may as well get our cuppa ready. Because let's face it, we're going to be on edge for the entire time. We need something to call us down. Oh, that's a good cuppa. Anyway, guys. <laughs> uh, I think I just did that just so I could get a drink. <laughs> anyway, guys. Um, how do I rate this episode? I say... Mm, let's not make it crazy birds. Can you guys even hear that bird? Uh, I think that's two birds fighting on the roof. <laughs> anyway, guys, I rate this episode uh, a four cards. No, 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 not four. What am I saying? Five. 
that last line is what pushed it to the epic, really. Between four or five cards, guys. Let me know what you think. Does it deserve to be a five, or does it deserve to be four? Maybe even lower, just because it doesn't have a duel. But the reason why I'm rating it so high is just because of the connections they're doing, really. They're showing off the bond between Owl and Zizen. They are showing Playmaker taking responsibility. They've shown our main bad guy and his powers to control the data storm. If that all doesn't really keep you shocked of what's going to happen and I don't know what will guys <laughs> but yeah guys that was it, it was truly an epic episode and honestly I really can't wait for the duel between player maker and revolver that is going to be one epic duel and I'm literally wanting that episode to come as soon as possible I may have to wait a few more days but honestly it cannot come any sooner so, yeah, that's it for this review, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to go finish off my cuppa. And probably find out what else happening to those birds. That does sound like bird on bird fighting action. <laughs> so, until next time, guys, this is me, signing out. Bye-bye. Hey, shut up!